All right. Uh, so hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Ayal Dimit, and I'm Jay Fox Securities, VP of Product Management. I want to thank you for joining us. And today we'll be talking about some key practices. We welcome all of you to take into consideration as you secure your application, your applications, and of course, your supply chains. So before we get started, a bit of information about us, about JFOC. Uh, we've been in business since 2008, so quite some time now. And we have over, over 7,000 customers with a very high coverage around the Fortune 100. And we're currently over 1,300 employees with continued growth. Uh, you can see some notable mentions at the bottom of the slide. We're especially proud of the uh, Global InfoSec uh, uh, Award that we won uh, recently for the most comprehensive DevSecOps tool. Um, with, in addition to that, JFrog uh, powers organizations across all verticals, so we're not vertical specific and we're very proud of that. Uh, you can see some logos here that you are uh, all familiar with. It goes to show us how universal our product portfolio is and our JFrog platform is, and it's one of our main values. So let's get started with reviewing the complexity that goes into application development. And it starts with every application holds a universe of complexity. So this is the challenge everybody knows and you know as well. And it's only growing in complexity over the past, uh, I would say five years or so, give or take. Um, on the one hand, we have the development challenge. There are multiple technologies, package types to consider, development tools, collaboration challenges, version control, testing tooling, CI tooling, uh, and, and so on. On the other hand, we have uh, the operational challenges that goes into application development. So what do, uh, what and how do we optimize the, our environment setup? Where do we deploy all of it? Do, do we deploy it on the cloud, all the way to the edge on IoT devices? We need to support multiple environment setups like on-prem, cloud, and of course, hybrid. Uh, and there are many nuances that we need to be familiar with when it relates to the different cloud providers. And all, the, all, of, this, all of these things, uh, these are things that tech executive, executives need to understand these days that starts in the development phase. Unlike in the past where this was someone else's job or challenge later on in the process of the application lifecycle. And this, uh, all of that goes into consideration when applications are being developed these days. So we talked about the development challenges on the left-hand side and the operational challenges, which is already a lot uh, by any means of measure. But on top of all of that, we have the people of interest uh, challenges that are, these are personas or multiple personas that have different needs and challenges that need to be addressed. So take developers, for example, they want to develop and ship product and ship applications, and they want to do it fast. We have the CIOs and infrastructure leaders with their needs and pains. We have DevOps engineers and managers uh, talking to developers about how they can ship all of this better, smarter, and faster. And of course, we also have uh, security leaders who want to be able to ship secure applications while helping the business succeed uh, and continue its growth. Uh, these security leaders uh, speak with the DevOps people, the engineers, basically everyone, uh, and make, making the, the best effort possible to educate the organization, prioritize uh, security vulnerabilities, and partner up with everyone else to make sure this all of this actually work. And we know how challenging all of this is. Uh, and there are multiple balancing acts that we all need to uh, be great at as we develop application nowadays uh, with all these challenges with the, that I just reviewed. Um, so all these challenges are complex on their own. And at the certain scale of a company, of a business, uh, it's very challenging, but it's possible to manage all of it. Uh, but at some point, uh, at some point when the organization is big enough or and uh, when the, the, the technology stack becomes diverse enough, when there are many people working collaboratively on developing and running these applications, where there's no, this is no longer possible. It, it does not scale 
above a certain threshold of complexity. So how can we take all this complexity and technology and people and initiatives at scale? How can we bring all this together? And there is only one way we can do this at scale, and that's by using and leveraging a supply chain platform. Now, tech doesn't replace culture. Culture changes uh, to address all these challenges are mandatory and critical for success, but all the culture changes on earth will not be sufficient to resolve and fix the problem. You must utilize technology and specifically a supply chain platform. A certain critical aspects can only be tied together and figured out using technology. So now let's look at the development stage. If we look at this simplified diagram, we can see the almost obvious journey of a piece of software application or a release uh, as software code and artifacts uh, flowing throughout uh, from left to right uh, uh, over the uh, supply chain. It starts, with, it starts with the external re public repos from which the developers pull resources. They add them to the developed software, their own proprietary code. They store them as a more mature artifact, such as a container. And from this point, that this piece of software or this release evolves to a build and a release distribution and then updates. In each stage, more objects, dependencies, and metadata are being added to it by developers by DevOps engineers, and even by production engineers, meaning that the software state in its distribution phase, for example, is much different than it was in the development stage or in the store phase, uh, much earlier in the process. The later the stage, the more context and the better it, uh, the, the, the release has or the application has, and the better it represents how that piece of software is going to behave in production. So one example of that is the Docker critical components are not necessarily always installed early as a package, but added separately as an inter integral component of the Docker, creating false uh, negatives in most SCA products uh, that are out there in the marketplace. So one example of that is Node.js container doesn't install Node as a package. Same issue happens with JDK files. So what's important to note here is that while code is being written on the left, the majority of the supply chain has binaries and containers going through it from somewhere around the center all the way to the right of production. Now, if we look at this from a security perspective, given the complexity of modern CI, CD and software supply chain frameworks, there are many entry points for the threat actors to interfere with the chain. It starts with the external repos and public packages that are being contaminated with malicious code through abusive configurations and secrets, secrets that are being added to uh, in later stages, all the way to exploitation of known vulnerabilities and zero days in production. Therefore, when we discuss software supply chain, we believe it's a, it's a must to cover the entire flow and not only the very shift left end of the spectrum, which is the common approach by many of the other plays out there uh, in the marketplace. Now, one of the biggest uh, uh, problems that everyone faces is that we have many tools, yet we have we still have some problems. So we all use these tools, all these different point solutions that cost us a lot, both in, in, uh, in terms of proper costs whether it's subscription or licensing, but also what hurts even more than that is all the integration overhead or the integration costs to get these tools to be um, uh, actually adopted at scale within our organizations for and with everything that comes into that and all that costs. And at the end, even after we integrate all these different point solutions, we still have many, many challenges that we face on a daily basis. We, if we are, you see prioritization overhead where it's still unclear what do we need to fix and when do we need to fix it. There's still a lot of remediation on clarity. How should we fix some of these vulnerabilities or some of these exposures that are being detected uh, and, and uh, detected somewhere around our, our, our application? We still have challenges when it relates to controlling and securing, securing uh, and setting up control gates to make sure that bad things 
do not move from stage from phase A to phase B. The next up is uh, the challenges you have with developer experience. How do we get your developers to like actually like working with these tools and with the security leaders uh, in the organization? Then last but not least, it's about clarity and risk overview. How can you tell how are we doing or how are you doing on a broader level? Are you doing better than you did last week? Or actually, are you actually in the same stage? Or are things actually being getting worse over time? There's unclarity, um, uh, even if you have all these different tools that you integrate into your into your supply chain and into your processes on a daily basis. So the the question the the, the question is is the cure better than the, the better than the actual the, the disease itself? Now let's uh, in terms of, so going back. Uh, to the supply chain, let's review two things that we, or two trends that we're seeing in the marketplace. Uh, we identify two main tracks. One is the security approach that we believe would be embraced by many of the different security players. And the other track is related to operational aspects. In terms of uh, the security aspects, we believe we will see more and more movement from the left to the right, and from the right to the left to the center, meaning to the center, when on one side we will see more solutions trying to prevent from left to right as early as possible, and another focus on detection and response from the left to the right, when runtime providers will try closing the loop between production and developers. In terms of operational aspects, we believe that also, although um, Everyone will try to consolidate. We will see that most of the mid size and big size organizations will use multiple uh, cloud application architectures. They will want to support more cloud platforms for business reasons. They will want to support multiple pipelines, uh, registries, and uh, to deliver apps that they uh, 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 registries and repositories to deliver apps that they will keep uh, suffering from aggregation of security uh, point solutions. These aspects have a major impact on one's ability to perform across the board, a comprehensive supply chain security solution and control all of it for the entire organization. Part of the challenge will be connecting the two and triaging between the left and the right only by uh, uh, and triaging uh, from the left to the right and doing so in the center of gravity of the supply chain. Now, I'd like to uh, move on and discuss a bit of, of, about uh, the software supply chain security fundamentals uh, that as you as uh, as we here at JFrog uh, see things when it relates to software supply chain security. So the number one aspect is binary focused because context is king. Earlier in the session, uh, we talked about how even though developers actually develop code, the majority of the supply chain has binaries and containers fl flowing throughout the supply chain. And we believe that being focused on the binaries in order to understand the full context in the best way possible will allow, allows you to have a clear view of what actually matters the most. Now, you have to also secure your code for other uh, business uh, considerations. But being binary focused allows you to have much more context and actually fix uh, and remediate the, the things that matter the most. The next aspect is being uh, research driven, keeping your eyes on the ball. If you do not uh, utilize uh, a solution that has dedicated research uh, uh, information baked into the product, meaning you are using only public information public uh, resources or open source solutions, you're almost by definition behind the curve in the sense that the threat actors out there, they keep on pushing the envelope in the sense of they keep on trying new things, finding new loopholes, finding new, new entry points into the supply chain. And if you don't, impose, if you don't uh, adopt a solution that is research driven, you are almost by definition behind the curve. And then uh, the, next, the last pillar is about control, control and secure. So as mentioned earlier, our platform controls all your software artifacts from a single point, 
By understanding every asset in your pipeline, JFOC has a unique visibility into which your data deliver more, delivering more accurate results and more comprehensive context to allow smooth risk-based remediation across the entire process. So all these main pillars allows you to focus on your business needs, which are to consolidate security tools to help you prioritize risk decisions, automating vulnerability resolutions, removing friction and making it convenient for developers, and of course, increasing productivity. Now, let's uh, take one example here and deep dive into it a bit and talk about the differentiation when it relates to the JFrog platform. Uh, let's talk about the prioritization challenges or how can you have overcome it. So as mentioned before, even though nowadays when you have multiple uh, point solutions, uh, you are being flooded uh, with a lot of vulnerabilities or with a lot of exposure that you need to handle. And it's unclear how you need to prioritize. So the key aspects that we look at uh, prioritization here at JFrog is around three main pillars. Number one, uh, source code is not uh, only is not good enough. As I mentioned before, binaries have a, a much more context than just code. Uh, one example for that is um, that they contain things that are not detected in code, such as configuration, and they contain more accurately what will be running in production. So if you are using uh, uh, the context of binaries, you have a better shot of prioritization, and I'll show you and I'll show you an example in a couple of minutes. Next up, in order to prioritize better, you need to have more signals or to have more dimensions of data to take into consideration while prioritizing. Otherwise, you'll be at risk of prioritizing something less important than anything and everything and everything that comes with that, such as cost, unhappy developers, and so on. And then lastly. Uh, remediation. Even if you uh, have a clear uh, and great prioritization strategy, if you don't have clarity in regards to how to remediate, meaning how do you make life prior will make life prioritizing much more complex. So you have a prioritized list, but it's not actionable. So one example for that is what, what version should you upgrade to? Is that version actually better than the existing one? Or potentially, does it actually worsen the situation by introducing other challenges into the mix? Or what do you do when you want to resolve a CVE that doesn't have a fixed version? How do you do that? Or do you think developers will want to try and figure that on their own? Will they? They will mo most likely try to avoid fixing the issue altogether. So even if you have a great uh, uh, prioritization strategy, if you don't have clear remediation strategy, um, and clarity in how to remediate, uh, you will not be able to prioritize accordingly. So let's look at one example uh, that show, demonstrates all these things uh, uh, in one. Uh, and with that is contextual analysis. So uh, our research team, uh, we have a dedicated research team, which I'll touch upon in a, in a couple of minutes, conducted the research on top of uh, Docker, Docker Hub's images. And it turns out that 78% of the reported common CVEs on top of Docker Hub images are not really exploitable. What I mean by that is, even though there's a CVE, attackers that try to will try to take advantage of those CVEs cannot actually cannot actually take advantage of those CVEs because they are not exploitable. Meaning that the specific piece of code that is vulnerable in this in these uh, in these packages is not really being called or used within those uh, Docker Hub containers or images. So let's look at one example. This is uh, one of the most, I would say, more divisive uh, CVs that were recently published. Uh, and the reason why, and the reason for that is, first of all, was when it was uh, originally uh, released, it was initially considered as a highly critical CV. Uh, and there were a few reasons for that. Number one, uh, this CVE leads to remote uh, code execution. Second, uh, when it was published, it received an MBD CVSS score of 9.8, which is obviously critical rating. And then lastly, this CVE affected a very, very popular NPM package called JSON Web Token that had at the time 12 million, uh, 12 million weekly uh, downloads of that specific package. 
Now, the fact is that even though this CV was published as a critical one and created a lot, a lot of, uh, I would say, tension uh, in some areas of the industry, the fact is that in reality, this issue probably did not affect even a single production system. Uh, and the reason for that is because the exploitation itself required the attacker to control a function argument which is never extended control, uh, which is never extended control, which is the public secret key argument that you will never uh, 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 get as, as an input as a uh, as a user from a user input. So this CV, in theory, was critical in reality because of its, uh, the actual usage of the code. Uh, the uh, the CV became irrelevant. So this is just an example showing you that if you take into consideration more signals and you look at the binaries that have more context other than just, just the code, for example, configurations and so on, you are able to take in, into consideration more signals and more aspects in order to prioritize better. So in some cases, these critical CVs, you don't even need to handle uh, at least not a, at, at that priority at that given time. Let's go back to reviewing JFox approach to software supply chain security. So our product approach uh, and security approach and roadmap are fully aligned with the two um, uh, needs that we've discussed uh, earlier in the session, both on the security angle and on the operational needs. In terms of the security challenge, we, know, we now offer an end-to-end uh, multi-gated uh, SCA solution from external repos to the developer all the way to distribution and then later on to production. You cannot do that if you do not control your supply chain. And in terms of the operational challenges, JFOG offers a multi-cloud, multi-registry and repository, multi-languages and formats. We call it product universality. Uh, and you can, can run your software supply chain uh, platform in one environment and hope to be uh, uh, secure. Num somebody needs to consolidate of it in one place, and that's what the JFOG platform uh, allows you to do, and it's huge value proposition. It's also important to know that the entire JFOG platform is powered by the advanced security research advantage. As mentioned before, we have that JFOG has dedicated research team across multiple aspects of security research. Uh, we have dedicated teams that are focused on, uh, on, on researching and, uh, and uh, enriching CV information. Uh, we have over 1,300 findings published on top of known CVs. In addition to that, we have dedicated teams that are, uh, that the sole mission is to detect malicious packages. And that team has discovered over 1,500 unique malicious package uh, discovered mostly around APM uh, and PyPy. And also we have also recently had the, the first ever finding of a malicious package detected in Nougat. In addition to that, we have a zero-day detection team that is focused on detection, uh, detection of zero-day vulnerabilities. And that team has already discovered over 500 uh, unique uh, zero-day vulnerabilities that have been discovered. And of course, uh, we, we are part of the ecosystem, part of the open source community. And when our teams find uh, very notable mentions that, that, at the high, that have an impact at the high scale, we also develop open source, uh, open, we develop our own open source tooling to allow um, customers, partners, not customers, the community to take advantage of these tools uh, in order to secure uh, that, those specific use cases. And our team has published uh, around 20 of these tools uh, um, since it, uh, uh, for, the, for the past couple of years now. Uh, one more thing to note, to note is JFOX security, uh, the platform use cases. These are all the different use cases that our platform supports from a business perspective. I'm not gonna um, uh, go through all these, uh, multi these uh, in detail, but I do want to mention that the JFOG platform empowers all relevant personas with all these use cases. Uh, um, one example for that is the curation use case, uh, which is allows you to have the visibility and control for all software packages entering the organization, prevention of malicious packages from entering the software uh, development lifecycle. 
Next to that, uh, we have uh, the capabilities to allow you to control promotion gates for security uh, concerns from the developer workstation all the way to production. That is with uh, a security gatekeeper at the bottom uh, line in the center, uh, allowing you to identif identify security and license based risks before applications are being promoted to production and to provide you with uh, actionable feedback and uh, mitigation guidance to your development teams. And then one last example I wanna, uh, I wanna go over is our, uh, of course, vulnerability management use case all the way on the right, uh, allowing you to fully track, have visibility and control of, of uh, software packages and the associated vulnerabilities, where, uh, when, and, and by which project team or developer are they being used across the entire uh, uh, software lifecycle. Uh, it also allows you to accelerate mitigation, and fix newly identified security issues with relevant context and mitigation guidance, and the reporting of uh, vulnerabilities in SBOMs uh, where and whenever that is needed. From a platform uh, perspective, security, uh, we have our platform is very security oriented. It starts with our JFrog uh, DevOps uh, side of things and has multiple security features baked into the platform, such as a granular LBAC or data segregation on internal bases or hardened systems and so on. On top of that, we have our JFox security offering, which is our tooling that allows you to scan your applications. It starts with our security essential package called also called X-Ray, which is our basically our proprietary SCA solution, a software composition analysis solution that has the capabilities of enhanced CV uh, data, which is powered by our research teams. It has malicious package detection, which is research driven as well, open source license clearance, uh, S-bomb generation, and operational risk uh, with, with, that, that is relevant for package maintenance. And in addition to that, we have our advanced security package, which adds on top of all of this uh, container security that includes uh, contextual analysis that we've covered earlier, along with secret detection. And on top of that, IAC security analysis that allows you to uh, detect IAC misuse, security uh, configurations, service configuration security, and application library misuse. In addition to all of this, we know that uh, ROI and business impact is, is an important key factor. Uh, we've recently commissioned a, 30, a third party analysis to conduct a total economic impact analysis uh, for us. And what we found that working with the JFOG platform has great economic benefit. We see close to 400% ROI within less than six months. And we also see close to $20 million NPV, which is net present value, which is constructed out of accelerated software de delivery, uh, increased efficiency, automated vulnerability and compliance workflows, and of course, improved productivity with DevSecOps. Uh, going back uh, before we wrap up, I want to go back to a slide we then we showed earlier, which is JFOG's platform um, se software security, uh, sec uh, software uh, supply chain security fundamentals, and how we see things that uh, what's our focus and what's our approach to, se to secure in your supply chain. It starts with being binary focused because binary is because context is king, as I mentioned. Uh, throughout our webinar today, you have to secure your code, but that's not enough. You have to secure your binaries because containers uh, and artifacts are flowing throughout your supply chain and risk can and is being added into those containers throughout the life cycle. Uh, therefore, you have to secure your binaries and, and to scan those across the entire supply chain. Uh, you have to be uh, research driven because otherwise you are by definition behind the curve. Uh, JFOG has multiple res dedicated research teams that are focused on vulnerability detection, zero day detection, and malicious package detection. And then last but not least, you have to uh, control and, all of, and secure all of it in one platform. Otherwise you're at risk of have, ha having uh, blind spots and not being able to control it and working with the different stakeholders across the organization in order to mitigate the operational challenges uh, that uh, that are coming in as part of developing applications at the nowadays 
and all the challenges we discussed at the, at the onset of the session. Uh, and with that, uh, I want to thank you for your time. Uh, appreciate uh, you joining the session. Uh, until next time, thank you.